Did you know that there are now over 7 billion people currently living on the planet Earth? And there's only about 500 people who've ever been to space. So going into space requires taking a rocket, or until recently taking a space shuttle through the atmosphere and entering into low Earth orbit. And that's about 300 to 400 kilometers high. And the International Space Station is where most of these astronauts go to. And there they can run experiments, and they can fix satellites, and maybe even do a spacewalk. Now the space station orbits the Earth every 90 minutes or so and it gives the astronauts a great view of the whole planet. So what's it like being in space? Since so few people have been there, most of us don't know what it's really like. And let's face it, we all have lots of questions about being in space. So we decided to ask former NASA astronaut and shuttle pilot Greg Johnson to answer a few questions from our primary schools here in Ireland about his experience being in space. Um, the first question I have is, why is it dark in space? The reason it's dark is because you need, uh, you need an object for light to reflect on it. And that's actually, we call it space, because it's space, it's not stuff, you know? And so space has a lot of empty non-material, and so therefore, there, there's, there's uh, most of space is, doesn't have light reflecting on, a, on, a, on an object okay. or light coming from an object. What does it feel like to float in space? Well, in zero gravity, and you might have seen it on TV or on a movie, it's completely different from how it is here on the planet where gravity holds us to, to the ground. And so just imagine if you could turn that gravity, you know, switch off, you're just floating. And so it's a little bit like you're falling, but you're not feeling the wind blast. You're just, it's, you're just silent. Now in a pool uh, is, is the closest thing to what it sort of feels like uh, when you're in, in zero gravity, but it's a completely different place that you just can't experience here on, on the earth. Is there sticky sand on Mars? Well, I've never been there, um, but the scientists tell me there might be water under the surface of Mars, so I think that's possible. But I think because the Martian surface is, is pretty dry and, you know, the atmosphere is very different, the air around the atmosphere is really not like the air that we have here on the Earth, so it may not be sticky, but I'd be just guessing. And do you ever feel lonely in space? I, my flights were 16 days at a time. Um, and there were times when I felt uh, alone because the space station is so big that you can get away from people for long stretches of time, five, 10 minutes. Um, and as you sit there in isolation and you look back at the planet, um, you realize there's billions of people on the surface of the planet and there's just a couple of you up there. So I, I say yes. But I've never been up there for six months or a year. I would certainly imagine, and I've been told that those astronauts do feel uh, lonely and, and they can't wait to get back to the planet. And I'll say one more thing, and that is speaking to moonwalkers, particularly they've told me that they really had the urge to get back to that beautiful planet because our planet is so beautiful uh, as observed from space, and, and I've never been there, but I'm told from the surface of the moon. Um, with the low gravity in space, so when you're eating or you're drinking, how do you swallow without the food just floating all the way back up? Well, our bodies, okay, so have you ever laid on the couch and watched TV and, and drank something or ate something, and, and it still works fine? I think if you stood on your head and, you're, and gravity's like pulling it the other way, that, that's a serious problem. But there's structures in, in our, in our uh, food pipe that will enable us to you know, swallow and eat even though gravity's not pulling it down. How's your pee cleaned uh, so you can drink it? So that's assuming, of course, you actually get to drink it. Well, I actually did drink pee in space, but it was somebody else's. Okay. Um, and so the only word that comes to mind is trust. Right. You just have to trust that the engineers know what they're doing. Now, water is just a chemical. And actually, drinking water that tastes good has 
additives in it, minerals in it that make it taste that way. And so the water that I drank that was processed urine or pee in space um, was a little bit flat tasting. So I think they needed to work on the recipe of the minerals just a little bit. How do you become an astronaut and do you have to go to college? Um, right now, astronauts need to go to go to college if they're working for government um, astronaut programs. Um, there are some uh, uh, tourist astronauts that pay their way, um, but it costs a lot of money and I think most of them have gone to college as well. So, so, so the answer is for the government right now, you need to go to college. If you're on the private se sector and, and you wanna purchase a seat, you wouldn't necessarily have to go to college, but you'd have to have a lot of money. Can you grow fruit and vegetables in space? Well, we have grown vegetables. Uh, there's a, a project called Veggie that Jessica could look on the internet and, and, and learn about vegetables. But it's interesting, uh, vegetables are psychologically really important to astronauts and, and, and plants uh, because uh, it, it's a, it's much, it's like a hospital up there. It's, it's a really sterile environment. And so having plants are emotionally satisfying. And, and, and so not just to eat the plants, but just to see the plants. What does it feel like going through the atmosphere? And I assume they mean up and down. Okay. Well, uh, Depending on the vehicle you're on, I was on the space shuttle. It was pretty violent going up through the atmosphere on the way up there, but it wasn't really because of the atmosphere, it was because of the rocket. Um, on the way down, the atmosphere is slowing us down. So you feel the forces of uh, deceleration or slowing down. You can also start feeling the forces of gravity. So it weighs on you. So coming in, you start to feel the force of gravity. You also have intense heating because as you're going really fast into the atmosphere. It heats up the front of the vehicle so it glows like a hot poker. So um, totally different uh, experiences on the way up and on the way down. And why did you become an astronaut? Um, I thought it was cool. I, when I was seven years old is when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. I thought it was really exciting. I loved airplanes. I loved spaceships. I wanted to do something that was interesting and different. And, uh, and honestly, I didn't really think I had a chance to go do it, but I just kept trying and then eventually they, uh, they picked me. So, uh, so I said, oh, you, be careful what you volunteer for, go off and do it. No, it was, it was awesome. It's an experience that, um, that, I, that I'd do again if I could go a third time. Uh, do you feel embarrassed um, when you pee in your spaces? Okay, now I have an interesting question to that. I did wear a diaper as I was required to, but I never peed in my diaper. Now, most astronauts can't tell you that. They shouldn't be embarrassed, however, because especially spacewalkers, when they go out for seven hours at a time, they're gonna have to pee, but I never did. So I, I technically can't answer that question. Okay. What is a space station? What is a space station? Well, a space station is a place that I, that's man-made that is in outer space. So right now, our space stations are in what's called low Earth orbit. It's 250 miles or so off the Earth's surface in orbit around the Earth, meaning it's just going fast enough that it's falling toward the Earth, but it never really gets there. But eventually, there might be space stations at points where gravity is, is equal between bodies, like for example, the Earth and the Moon, and it might sit out there and not necessarily in the kind of orbit that our space stations are now. But I'd say a space station is any man-made place, any, any uh, you know, facility that's built by humans that's out in outer space and can be visited and departed from. What kind of jobs did you have to do uh, when you're on the space station? Well, right now, just about any kind of job uh, that uh, that you might find here on the on the Earth, except for maybe uh, I don't know of any lawyers up on the space station just yet. But you have to take care of all the necessities in life, so you have to cook, you have to clean, uh, you have to be able to do skills. 
Um, we ha medical doctors uh, go to outer space. Um, space walking is 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 an ad adventurous kind of activity that has similarity to swimming and mountain climbing, climbing and parasailing and you know, and so the, all different kinds of skills that you'll find here on the Earth are similar skills that might be needed on the space station. And certainly when we go to Mars, almost all of those skills will be needed. We'll need electricians, you know, we'll need all the skills that we see uh, here, on, here, here on the Earth. What do the stars and the planets, and including Earth, look like from the space station? And when you look at them, do you believe that we'll find extraterrestrial life and any of the planets in the solar system? I'd say they look very, very similar uh, to us on the space station as when you're standing on the Earth. The stars don't twinkle as much because you're not looking through an atmosphere. Um, but relatively speaking, we're pretty close to the Earth. And so stars and, and planets are, you know, they look similar. You know, the moon looks similar. I remember I looked at a full moon when I was on orbit and it looked just like the full moon after we landed. You know, it looked the same to me. Do you think we'll find extraterrestrial life when I mean the planets in the solar system? I, in the solar system, I, I, I'd only be guessing. Um, maybe not, but certainly in the universe, I don't see how we, there wouldn't be some sort of intelligent life. It might not be based on how we're built as, as humans, but I can't imagine there wouldn't be some sort of, uh, you know, organized intelligent forms out there. But how does being in space affect a menial, everyday tasks such as eating and sleeping and showering and, of course, using the toilet? Well, um, first of all, it's fun. Everything becomes fun because it's different. Um, you know, toilet operations, for example, they're designed here on the Earth based on gravity. And so showers, toilets, sinks, faucets, they all operate with gravity as a as a, a way that the water flows here or there. And so in space, we have to do things differently. It actually makes cleaning your body easier in space because you can just spray yourself with water and it'll just stick to your body. It doesn't have to go down into a drain. So you can spray yourself and then dry yourself off and take a shower. Going to the potty is a little bit more complex because you have to make sure that the liquid gets where it needs to go and the solid needs to get where it needs to go. So there's a mild vacuum and a very sanitary device that we use, um, separate those two, you know, uh, two different uh, ways of using the bathroom. And, um, you know, the liquid part, we can just expel it off into space, but the solid part, we don't want to toss that out there. Uh, we bring it back with us. Okay. And just one final question. It's, um, I know a lot of preparation goes into your space trips, and, and um, but for you, uh, what is it that surprised you the most um, during your time in space? Um, I was surprised how beautiful our planet looks. Um, when, when you uh, look at photographs, at, uh, and, and you can even experience this on the ground, if you look at photographs of fish in, in a, in a, in a, near a coral reef, um, it, it looks beautiful. But when you're there seeing the fish, it's just, it's, it's a different experience. And so with me, looking at our planet, um, and of course, we're going around the Earth every 90 minutes, and so we're we're covering uh, a large portion of the populated landmass of our planet, and we have so many wonderful places on the planet to look at, and there's no borders on any of the uh, on any of the countries, and um, and the colors, and just the 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 beautiful um, places all around the world make make me want to travel there. So I was really surprised. I knew I would be, but we, all the geometry, all the tasks that we practiced on the ground in simulators uh, were um, very not surprising. Everything looked and operated as expected, but the backdrop, the planet behind that is what was so surprising. Greg, listen, thanks for taking the time. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and um, I hope to see you again sometime. Thank you. Thanks.